day again with uh, Dr. Omar Zaid again today. And uh, I, I really, you know, with, with everything that's happening in the world right now, uh, it's really important for Muslims to wake up really. And, and, and I, you know, I, I, I'm going to really try to make this uh, for my listeners. I'm trying to tell you that I'm going to try to make this the best discussion I've had with Dr. Omar. You know, I went through his website again, got a, a few more ideas. Um, uh, and, and, and I think I have some important questions that we can revisit some things that are very, really, really important and need to be emphasized. And um, so, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Um, so, Dr. Omar, uh, welcome. And uh, so my first question is that, uh, number one, uh, I think I want to talk about uh, the symbol, how rampant are cult symbolisms rampant in our modern day society. Now, I know you've done a lot of work on the one eye and showed the kafara, uh, uh, its relationship with the KFR, the kafara, with the one eye. But but you also talk about uh, other symbols that are in, in, in the modern companies, corporations, that you can mm-hmm. find also in the past. So if you could mm-hmm. touch, touch on uh, the one eye symbol, if you could touch on the uh, modern day uh, occult symbols, uh, please. I see. Well, some people have called me an expert in, um, in, in symbology, and uh, I'm not, uh, not really. I know some things about these matters. Uh, as I said before, um, and uh, may it please Allah to uh, grant us clarity of thought as we uh, provide knowledge for our listeners in this hour. As I've said before, they are um, sigils. And you, 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 sigil is a, is a magical form of branding, okay? Mm-hmm. And to, to take this... I speak not in specific terms, mm. okay? Uh, that is for the political scientists who want to talk about individual and even national motivations. Right. You mentioned uh, also I giving speak, the spiritual principles on... I, I'm trying to elaborate the spiritual principles, exactly. Yeah. Yes. And this is the Tawheed's perspective uh, on the dean of the dean that is missing okay in the uh in the teachings in the doctrines in the purview of the alim Mm -hmm. Uh, this is what i noticed as i spent uh, those years amongst them in malaysia i mean i never planned on being an alim matter of fact when i read my contract with the university of islamic university at istak it said I'm an. Uh, it, it specifically said that I am by signing this contract. I am an alim. <laughs> I was I was surprised. <laughs> okay. I was shocked to find that out, and I said, "Oh my God, I didn't plan on this. I, you know, I'm just there." Okay, all I did was write a book. For God's mm-hmm. sake, that's all I did, and but I put all of my energy into writing that, and it it found. Uh, it found a, it made a way for me, so there I was, and so this perspective is missing. This tall heed, this gestalt perspective, mm-hmm. uh, is something that I learned as a scientific principle from the, my studies of the works of uh, the philosopher and scientist called named uh, Goethe. Mm-hmm. Now Goethe said that the ultimate responsibility of the true scientist is to describe the archetype. Mm, he said, beyond the description, beyond the description of the archetype, he says, you can go no further because mm. what is there behind it is hidden mm. and you, you cannot penetrate it. Okay? Right, right. Okay. And then I always carried this with me. And then when I saw those principles elaborated in the Quran, I mm. said, well, here we are. Mm. Uh, you know, I get to the archetype as best as I can, and I leave it at that. Okay. Mm. And, now, and that what happens when you finds those spiritual principles, 
Uh, yes. and, 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 and so that's what you're trying to clarify. And then, uh, then yes. we look at the world through that lens, uh, which yes. is basically a Quranic lens, right? Looking at yes. the dark side, yes. so to say. Yes. Um, okay, so let's begin, inshallah. Um, let's talk about, uh, the Quran talks about magic in Babylon. So let's start there, because ah. that is something that even an average Muslim uh, can understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَاتَّبَعُوا مَا تَطْلُوا الشَّيَاطِينُ عَلَى مُلْكِ سُلَيْمَانِ and they followed the false teachings of the Satan in regards to the kingdom of Sulaiman وَاتَّبَعُوا مَا تَطْلُوا الشَّيَاطِينُ عَلَى مُلْكِ سُلَيْمَانِ وَمَا كَفَرُوا سُلَيْمَانِ وَلَكِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ كَفَرُوا Sulaiman didn't do kufr he didn't do blasphemy but the shayateen no. blasphemy but putting it on, on Sulaiman and so these angels come down in Babylon, in Babylon, to teach yes. magic, is what the verse says. Now, uh, yes. I don't want to go into the specifics of the angels and all of that. I just want to talk about how Babylon became this place where these dark sciences started from and these uh, occult societies started from, and then their infiltration into Kabbalah into the Jewish religion, which is specifically in the Quranic reference, is referring to the Jewish, mm -hmm. the Jewish aspect of it. Mm -hmm. but another aspect, mm -hmm. which is what Tabau ma tatlu shayatinu ala mulki Suleiman, and they and the shayatin they recited to them or gave them teachings regarding the kingship of Suleiman, and so it seems like in the future again the Messiah to come is going to establish this new kingdom of Suleiman, right? And so it's not mm -hmm. just the teachings of Suleiman, but it's the it's the idea of power, the power that he had. So if you can comment mm -hmm. on on that, uh, Babylon, mm -hmm. uh, the Kabbalah, uh, the occult sciences, Christianity, and and, oh. and and kingdom of Suleiman, because this is okay. the Quran. <laughs> it's clear, and those connections that I mentioned are very clear to a person who has even basic. Like can understand. Okay, this is what the Quran is saying. So I think this yes. is a starting point. Yes, this is of paramount importance, but it is and, uh, completely oh, mind you, for for my listeners. I want to mention when does Allah say this? After giving the entire history of Bani Israel, after uh, saying, "I gave you manna and salwa, and I gave you, mm -hmm. you know." I asked mm -hmm. you to, do, to sacrifice the cow and you didn't do it. And after you tried to kill the prophets and after you tried to change the book of Allah, that charge sheet, there is a yes. whole charge sheet in Surah Al-Baqarah of about... <laughs> uh, it's, a, about it's, a like long, it's a long indictment. <laughs> yes, it's a long indictment, exactly. After yes. mentioning that tort, the last indictment that is given before <laughs> Allah changes the conversation to the Jewish people in Medina. So that was like the uh -huh. history. This yes. is the last verse. That is the last indictment of the of the Jewish community in the Quran when that indictment is being given. And then, just so that the, the significance of it can be understood, then the mm. subject comes to the Jews in Medina. And then finally, the subject of the change of the Qibla, meaning because of all these indictments and all these charges, the Qibla is being taken away from you, and a new Ummah yes. is being brought in its place. And so now the yes. Qibla will no longer be the previous Qibla, and now there's a new Qibla, yes. a new direction. Okay, so this is like yes. how al Bakra is. That's the important, that is the last indictment. Yes, yes. All of what you said, I see you've done your homework. <laughs> this, is, this is wonderful because what you're doing is islamizing what i know okay and that needs to be done for the sake of the the ummah um this uh, indictment this uh, dr Umar, i don't think you, you don't understand the significance of the things like you know quran and science became a whole new subject it didn't exist comparing uh, uh uh, nature with the words of Allah and seeing if there's congruity, the subject didn't exist, right? And then it yeah. became a subject. Yeah. This is a whole field that is untouched 
it is a it is a it is a it is a degree in itself well it's it's a form of kalam that mm. is not uh, exhausted its potential it is, yes. has only been touched on okay and um, I, I, you know, perhaps we can open this uh, field up a little bit so that your generation can pick it up and move forward with it in the way they will have that it to, needs to be. They yeah. will have to, to deal with these demonic forces to be yes, able to they have penetrate to the, what is before their eyes versus what's real. They'll have to. Yes. Uh, as long as they don't, as long as they keep in an avoidant posture, then uh, the shaitan, the kingdom of Iblis, rises and the kingdom of God falls. Okay, And this has nothing to do with Allah's dominion. This has mm. everything to do with the Ummah's dominion. Remember, oh, this, is the, this, is the last, yeah, this is the last speech that the Prophet made in Mecca. Okay? He said, if you do this, if you do that, if you do the next thing, then you will keep dominion. You will maintain it. Muslims mm -hmm. have lost this dominion. And mm -hmm. this is the reason why. Because they have not applied this aspect of kalam. Okay? Mm -hmm. They have not established and uh, built up a spiritual science. Okay? Mm -hmm. They're going around, they go around counting beads and you know how many how many benefits they're going to get in the hereafter mm. okay that is okay but that's not all of the picture mm. the full picture is what you do now yes what you do now okay and how you maintain your dominion and if you don't do these things <coughs> excuse me if you don't address this evil if you don't forbid it you see Mm. then you lose dominion, you see. This evil has to be forbidden. You mm. cannot cooperate with it. You cannot cry, strike a bargain with it. You cannot uh, make a sort of agreement with the evil. You have to forbid it. <laughs> okay? Right. And the Muslims, the Muslims are not doing this. Mm. So this is a vast topic, and we'll touch on some of the aspects today, I want to broaden uh, the scope of the archetype, okay? okay. Uh, and I think that's important for your listeners, so that when they understand the archetype, then wherever they see the specifics, they will be able to recognize it as part of the archetype of evil. Mm -hmm. And this evil is not congruent with the archetype of the tree of life okay mm -hmm. so we're, we're comparing two trees here one is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the other is the tree of life mm -hmm. well the tree of life is the right hand and this is we will analogize it to the right hand and this is the word of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is kun faya kun mm -hmm. this is the word that establishes, establishes us and which we have to fall into line with in order to maintain dominion. If we do that, then we only bear good fruit. Mm. This goes back to Genesis. Oh, see, you see, we only bear good fruit. Okay. Mm. So if we uh, don't eat of this tree, but we eat of this one, Okay, then we're going to bear both good and bad fruit, hmm. you see, and that we cannot uh, compromise with. Most people have compromised with it, and they say, oh, that's just the human estate, that's just the way life is, you have to right. put up with it. Well, to a certain degree, that's What's is, happening that in America, for example, one of the things that's happening, and I know you touch upon this in so many different ways, uh, in one in one of your other books, um, but you know what? Like for example, Muslims in America, they are leaning towards the Democrats. Okay, because they're leaning towards the Democrats, they're compromising with the LGBT community. It just right. comes with the package. Right? Right. It's it's a whole this package. And 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 so you 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 kind of like say, okay, well they're not so bad, uh, kind of attitude, right? They're they're not so bad. 
So uh, and and then we say things to appease them, and then the argument is given uh, that you know, well, they're the only community supporting us, and uh, uh -huh. and so this is kind of like you know what you're saying, eating, and this is like a specific example of that. We're eating from that bad yes. tree yes. because yes. we don't like the Republicans. So then we have to go with the Democrats, and therefore Muslims are told to vote Democrat. But we're also in the process mm -hmm. compromising our entire kalam, our entire uh, <laughs> worldview. Yes, yes, it's a morass. It's a morass of evil. There is no solution to be found within that system. None. Okay. Uh, so, uh, but that's a that's a different topic. But you're you're correct. You're Which correct. is very you interesting because find... the prophet did not change the system, as in from within. He brought a completely new system. It was a revolution. Yes. Of, of, yes. The, of you know, it was an economic, social, political. It was a complete revolution, and yes. which I find very this interesting. Is in... It wasn't. Yes. This this is. Uh, what the prophet did was complete the promise made to Ibrahim. Okay, one of your um, one one of your listeners uh, uh, asked me to address this in one of the comments. This prophet, this promise made to Ibrahim regarding the promised land. Okay, mm -hmm. and this the promise was that the God would give. The promised land, all the way from Euphrates to the Nile, okay, to the children of Ibrahim, to the children of Ibrahim, not to the Jews, okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> to the children of Ibrahim. This was the this was the promise, and this is what happened. And when Isa came, Isa announced that the kingdom of Allah, the kingdom of God, was at hand. Then he told his disciples to wait for the promised one, to 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 wait. And oh, I talk so about this. That, that's what it means. That the kingdom is near, or the kingdom is coming. Yes, the it's referring to the kingdom yes. given to Prophet Muhammad. Is what you're saying? Well, there there are two kingdoms. Okay, uh, in this in this sense, the archetype of the mm. kingdom. One is within. All right. Isa also made this clear. The kingdom of God is within you. So mm. don't look for it outwardly. Right. But when he announced the coming of the prophet and he named him, he named him, he, he named him. All of Israel knows this. At least the leaders knew it at the time because he named him publicly. And he, mm. sa he said, Muhammad. He said, Muhammad mm. is coming. When he comes, then you follow him. Wait mm. until he comes. This is what Khadija was doing. She was waiting. Her, mm. her and her people were waiting because they knew. You see? Right. I mean, that's and, when you read when you read the life of Khadija in detail. It, yes. And even before that, uh, like the uncle of the prophet or or other other key figures uh, that at yes. least come in the theater of the prophet, it does seem like they were they were kind of yes. like looking and waiting and 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 even like yes. hoping even. So, so that's the Jews really cool. do as well. That is why the chief rabbi of Medina converted, because he knew. Mm. He knew. And when he spent the night with Muhammad Wahasalam and tested him, Muhammad passed all the tests. Mm -hmm. The rabbi knew the most learned of them. The Quran says this, the most learned of their people. He knew, so he tested Muhammad step by step by step, and Muhammad got his PhD that night. Okay? He got his PhD in prophethood that night from the Jew. From the highest from the highest Jew in the land, he received it. And then what happened? What did the Jews do? They rejected that rabbi after he became a Muslim and acknowledged right. Muhammad. Just for my listeners, this is what they uh, do. He's, he's referring to Abdullah bin Sama, Salam radiallahu anh, just as a reference point. He's referring to that rabbi that was in Medina. So if anybody wants mm. to look that up, they can do, this, do so. Anyway, yes. so yes, let's continue, inshallah.
Let's go back to, to, to Babylon and try to elaborate a little bit more on the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, it's not that Muslims shouldn't know about good and evil. Otherwise, Harut and Marut would not have taught, you see. Mm-hmm. He would not have taught them. He, he taught the, the leaders and he said, now, this is a test. Do not blaspheme. Do not cross over into the kingdom of Iblis. I'm te- we're teaching you this so that you will recognize the archetype of this tree. Hmm. Don't eat of it. Hmm. Know about it, but don't do it. Okay. So, uh, this and is our what situation is the same today. You're yes. like the Harut Marut teaching us of that archetype yes. and saying, look, yes. That might open a door for somebody to listen to you and say, hey, I want those powers. I want those spells, right? <laughs> yes. But that's not that's the reason you're right. teaching it, right? That's you're right. teaching it that's so that right. we can recognize that archetype and, and, and yes. we can stay away from it. So you're like in the yes. place of Harut and Marut in the modern age. Well, kind of, but uh, I, I'm, as I said before, I'm more of an informed reporter. Okay, uh, I'm an investigated reporter. That's what a doctor is. He investigates and then he reports to the patient what is really going on, and then he tries to give him the proper appropriate remedies. That's all I'm doing. Okay, so this is what happened. Okay, now when you talk about infiltration. Uh, of uh, these particular uh, people, it happens right away on the death, on the death of the master, on the death of the prophet, on the death of the chosen king. Uh, it happens almost immediately, and we 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 go back to Suleiman, and when Su- after Suleiman died, uh, those people rose up right after him, and they were schooled in the knowledge of uh, the uh, mysteries of Egypt. And mm-hmm. this is a thing, the mysteries of Pharaoh, and the Quran makes this very clear. Mm-hmm. God hates those things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> God hates them, okay? This is not something that you can discuss and try to compromise with. God hates them, mm-hmm. Okay. And God hated Pharaoh, and Pharaoh hated God until the very last moment. And what happened to his magicians? His, magi- his magicians, after they were confronted with the power of God that streamed through uh, Prophet Musa, and after they saw this, they said, we will sin no more. Mm. We will follow your directives no more. You are not our God. Okay, Pharaoh was taught and he believed himself to be God. That's how strong the, the illusions were. That's mm. how strong the magic is. If there wasn't, if the magic didn't work, they would not do it. Mm. You see, if the demons didn't incarnate, if the jinn didn't do these works, Pharaoh and those magicians would not participate with this thing. But it mm. works. And the magicians, when they were confronted with the power of Allah, okay, and they actually saw it because up until then they hadn't seen it. You see, when they actually saw it, they converted, they became Muslims. And so what did Paro do? He crucified them. (laughs) You see, so are you ready to pay the price? You Mm -hmm. see. This is, this is what has to be done. You have to face this. Every Muslim has to face this. Rather than compromise, you have to be prepared to die. Mm. And did the Prophet not say, die before you die? Yes. <laughs> of course. Yeah, of course he did. Of course he did. And this has everything to do with the two trees. Choose. Mm. Musa, when he came down from the mountain, he said, choose this day whom you will serve. Which mm. kingdom you will serve, okay? Mm-hmm. And on the left hand, at the base of the mountain, there was the enemy of Allah practicing the religious rituals of Pharaoh, right there in the, in the wilderness, mm. at the foot of the mountain of Sinai. And Musa said, choose. 
And those who stood with Musa, they were spared. Those who stood with Kor, uh, what the, his name was, Korba, something like that, they were all destroyed. Okay. Yeah. And this is an archetypical picture of what happens in the end. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is not a joke. This is very serious. And you get cut, caught up in these Democratic versus Republican games. This is from Iblis. The whole thing is from Iblis. This complete dialectic picture is from Iblis. Has mm. nothing to do with Allah. Allah's system is what the what he brought with the Caliphate, okay, of the Prophet Wahi Salam. And that was destroyed within one generation. Mm. Mm. Okay. Within one generation, it was destroyed. And the people, the Muslims, have been following the system of the left-hand path ever since then, with all the outward trappings of Islam. Yeah, They had all the outward trappings, and that's fine. Some of those things are good, but it's this goodness. <laughs> there's goodness on the left hand, you see, and there's also evil on the left hand. If you follow the right hand, there's no evil. Mm. You remember, you remember the early days of Medina and even in Mecca, when it was time for prayer, Muslims just dropped everything. They went to the mosque. They did not shutter their houses. They did not lock their shops. Yeah. There, was no, there was no thief in sight. Mm. You see? There was no evil being perpetrated. It was not allowed. It was not allowed for two reasons. One, because of the, the siyasa dunia, dunia. I don't know if I say that correct. But the spirit of the time had, of Islam had descended upon the entire congregation. No one would think about committing a crime. Mm. It just didn't occur to people. And if you were a stranger entering that town, you were so all inspired by the spirit of holiness, you, mm. you tread very lightly. Mm. Okay? Now, people are forgetting this reality mm. because we're, the whole world is living in the left hand now. And so we're treading on good and evil, and it's commonplace. This mm. is the new abnormal. Okay? Mm -hmm. The normal situation is to kingdom of Allah that Isa had predicted and prophesied and told his disciples to wait for. Mm -hmm. And getting back to your, 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 your question of the Christianity, this, this has been distorted. The people who infiltrated Christianity, they were no Christians in the day of Isa. Mm -hmm. There were no Christians. They were all Jews or disciples of Isa. They never called themselves Christians. The Romans called them Christians. Mm. Other people called them Christians. They never called themselves Christians. Okay, okay. yes. So they Meaning were the Jews. Of Christianity gave the title of Christianity. Yes, the whole title, the whole thing about Christianity, it's a false religion, okay, from, from, from the very foundation. Christ is not his name, okay? Yeah. Christ, <laughs> Christ is a pagan name. It's a pagan title. Jesus Christ means anointed savior. It's mm. a Greek term. It has nothing to do with the son of Mary. Nobody mm. he knew ever called him Jesus Christ except for a Roman soldier after he was dead. Mm. The Roman soldiers would mock the Jews and say, you killed your Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You killed your anointed savior, you stupid, you know, uh, I have to, uh, my, my soldiers is, is rising up here. You know, I, I have, I still have those tendencies to use the wrong words. Um, but the soldiers mocked the Jews for killing their anointed savior. This has nothing to do with the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ has nothing to do with the kingdom of God. It's not his name. It's not his spirit. Okay. Mm. That is the spirit of the pagan antichrist mm. and Jesus Christ in pagan antiquity. Many of them crucified. 
Many of them died, went to hell, resurrected. Many of them born of a virgin. Okay. All, the whole story has been concocted. Hmm. We can go into that uh, at another time. I, I'm writing a little bit about that now uh, in one of my essays. But this thing has been so perverted that what is now appearing to be normal and what is appearing to be a classical religion is, is not a religion at all. It's become a religion, okay? But what does religion mean? Religion means remembrance of God. Hmm. If, if you look at the term it, itself, it means to remember God. And uh -huh. what is the Quran? It's a reminder, <laughs> okay? Right. So the Quran, may, the Quran came to sort all this out because there was great confusion at the time of the prophet's advent. Okay? Mm. Great confusion everywhere in all these realms. You had so many sects. The Roman church was not a monolithic institution. Mm. It was divided. Okay. Yeah, Constantine, uh, he, he did his best to unite it, uh, unite Rome under Christendom. But then what did he do? The first thing he did was, okay, this is Christ. This is the new religion. Da, 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 da. We have the Trinity. We have our Nineteen Creed. We have all these sort of things. And then he left and went to Constantinople, split the empire. <laughs> right, right. This is not unity. <laughs> the whole thing was disunity. And... Uh, there were very few uh, sects at the time who were what you might call monotheists uh, uh, in the true sense, and they were mono, what they called monophysite. They believed in the son of Mary, they believed in Isa, but they did not believe he was God, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, they were not convinced about all the prophethood, they didn't understand prophet, prophethood for, in the same way that we understand it now uh, mm -hmm. as Muslims, but they knew that those amongst them, for example, the monk uh, who uh, uh, Mohammed had conversations with, I've forgotten his name, but he had conversations with them. And that monk also identified him. The monk knew. Yeah. And how did he know? He knew because of the prophecies, not because of what Jesus said, just Jesus said, uh, uh, Isa said when he addressed the Jews, but also because of the prophecies in Isaiah, which I speak about in, I elucidate in detail in my book on the Trinity, because mm -hmm. all of these uh, indicate the advent of Muhammad. Okay, mm -hmm. so they knew. There were certain sects who knew and who expected him, and the Jews knew, okay? But, as we know and we appreciate, the Jews like the left-hand path. They, they have uh, uh, this penchant for good and evil fruit, mm. okay? And they justified the evil... Uh, by saying, well, we have to practice the evil in order to achieve the good. <laughs> mm. And we're the chosen ones for the whole world. So we're going to scapegoat the goys and put the evil on them and keep uh, the devil occupied with them while we're taking control. Okay. Mm. So this is a form of magic. It's a form of magic. That's what it is. Mm. And this is what they do. They uh, uh, practice both the good and the bad fruit. They know how to produce both. They divide, okay? And one of the major divisions, point of divisions, is to separate man from wife. Well, mm. the best way to separate man from wife is to uh, allow them to stay together, but keep them in different realms, okay? Mm. So that they do not complement each other, okay? So that they do not complete a gestalt vision, you see. So we have, this is what the, the, the Catholics did when they instituted celibacy. Oh, we can't have these men loving their wives and the, the wives loving their men because that's going to destroy the ecclesiastical authority mm. which we're uh, keeping our dominion in Rome. So Gregory the Great, made this law, okay, so the priest could not marry. And that was, uh, well, I forgot what century this is now, 
but we're we're looking a thousand years into Christianity or so. And the priests up to that point had concubines. Many of them were married. Many of them had children. They mm. weren't always, you know, it, it, this is common knowledge. And not only that, many of them did not even know that the New Testament existed. Mm. Mm. Okay. You have monks into the Middle Ages that had no idea that there was a book called the New Testament. Mm. <laughs> this is how ignorant people were kept until the printing press. Okay. okay. So are we coming full circle now? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So the, the Jews made it a point to keep people ignorant. And this is one of the things that Isa, uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm on my pulpit now. I seem to be preaching, but that's okay. No, no, it's great. It's great. Uh, uh, when, when Isa threw the, uh, the Jews out of the temple, uh, one of the things that he, he told them was, you make the religion of God of no account with your legalism, okay? Mm. You make truth of no account in the minds of men because of your legalism. You prevent men from entering the kingdom of God. Mm. Now, what, what that means is, is twofold. That you prevent men from entering the kingdom of God within, and you prevent them from manifesting it without. Mm. And he said, you, the Jews, you do this. Mm. He did not say, you, the Roman emperor. And remember what he, the prophet said. The prophet that. said he would behave like the Jews. Yes. And, and if one of them went into a lizard's hole, so would we. And so we're doing this yes. that same indictment uh, <laughs> of Isa <laughs> alayhi salatu wasalam. He yes, would put that that's on us happening. today. Yes, that's what's happening. It's happening in all disciplines right across the board. If the Jew does this, if the Jew declares this, if his infiltrators declare this, the Muslims run and they jump in. This is what's happening. And uh, one of the things that's now occurring here in this dialogue between us and uh, for the benefit of our listeners, is that we're going to help them come out of the rabbit hole. Mm. We're going to help them come out of that den, come out of the lizard hole. And why did the prophet say lizard hole? Because the lizard is cold-blooded. Oh, wow, subhanAllah. <laughs> cold-blooded, okay? The lizard is completely and totally self-serving. Mm. After the babies are born, <laughs> they're, they're already out there eating and gobbling everything for themselves, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and anything that gets in their way. The mother just abandons them, okay? They, they're not cared for in, 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 in what we might consider the motherly sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see pictures of crocodiles and the babies all over the mother, but that doesn't last very long. You know, it's not 20 years like the human, <laughs> or even 50 <laughs> in some cases, okay? Mom, I, my husband left again. What am I going to do? I don't know how to keep my man. Uh, well, I told you there are two F's. You've got to feed them and you imagine the other word. Okay. <laughs> All right. My wife, my wife, she said, what do I have to do to please you? I said, you've got to, there are two F's. Okay. And everything's fine. Okay. <laughs> You take care of these, and I'm yours forever. <laughs> okay? And you, you ladies know what I'm talking about, okay? So, and so do you men. Now, this, so Harut and Marut prevents this complementarity between the husband and wife. They keep them together, but they keep especially the Muslims, they keep the male chauvinists, don't they? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the male chauvinists woman does not become a wife she becomes a servant she becomes a slave she does not become a companion uh, well the the two great commandments is love the lord your god okay above all other things and the second one love your neighbor as you love yourself who's mm -hmm. your closest neighbor my friend your mm -hmm. wife yeah 
Yes. She's your closest neighbor, is she not? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. So you see how you see how uh, misdirection. Fact, uh, that's very interesting because Quran mentions the right of Sahib al Jambi, the person who is to uh, your side. Like literally, uh, it means the person to your side. And so generally, yes. when we talk about that. We talk about like if you're on a train and there's somebody to your side, or you know you're in the marketplace and somebody's in front of you in line. But it actually, I mean, if you take the Quranic word itself, Sahibul Jamb, uh, there's no one who's more Sahibul, no one to your side more than your wife. Yeah, who is taken out of the side of of Adam. Right. Okay. If you if you if you read the the book of Genesis and how it is that Eve came into being, she came into being by take by having been taken from the side of our, uh, of Adam. Okay. Mm -hmm. Allah put him to sleep, removed the rib, and fashioned Eve from that rib. Okay. Now that brings so, so to those mind are the two uh, extremes, right? One extreme is like the feminazi. And the yeah. other extreme is where you make them into slaves. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, now we're living in this. Uh, now we're living the backlash to the to the male chauvinism. Uh, the Christians were male. The you know male chauvinists for centuries. My God, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and and now the the Christian uh, Christianity is now experiencing the the backlash of two thousand years of male supremacy without mm -hmm. the woman being recognized for whom she really is, man's mm -hmm. closest neighbor, okay? Mm -hmm. And his completion, woman completes man and man completes woman. Mm -hmm. So that independently, if you remain separate, separate and you do not complete the complementarity, you cannot realize the kingdom of Allah. It cannot be done, see? They have to be, it, the kingdom of Allah is realized in complementarity. I speak about this in my new book uh, on, on, on marriage, uh, the primacy of heterosexuality. Mm. And I address everything that concerns the LGBT movement, and I absolutely and totally destroy it. Mm. Uh, but compassionately so. Because uh, there are reasons for this existence, but we'll talk about that a, a, a different at a different time. I think uh, now we should uh, return. So let's go back to, to Babylon, and, we'll and go back to Babylon. And then yeah. you you and then you started talking about the J Jewish people, or uh, a big part of the Jewish community that takes from the good and the bad tree, and that they've oh. kind of like divided this, uh, and and then you related that to the husband and the wife. Of the division. Yes. Um, yes. So, yes. This this goes back to the fragmentation that we spoke about um, uh, uh, two or three uh, 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 interviews uh, ago yes. last week. Yes. Uh, this fragmentation. The fragmentation keeps people divided. It keeps. You know, that's it prevents interesting. Cohesion. I'll just mention as a side point when we learn how to do ruqya and when we learn from our yes. teachers about magic and how to break it and so on and so forth. There's different types of magic. The most common type of magic is called Sihr Tafriq, the magic of dividing people, like the son from the mother or husband from yeah. the wife, you know, a type yeah. of vision. Keep going, I'll be ready. Right division is important. Uh, keep going, the son from the mother. Character. Yeah, and, and so we find that same archetype, right, uh, uh, manifesting itself in the same way mm -hmm. uh, when shaitan is, 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 is doing it to society. That's what Fir'aun did. He divided his people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so a lot of these... All of this... Yes. The... I, I I think I've lost my train of thought a bit, but you, you wanted to go back to Babylon. Yes. Um, <coughs> there were two streams that came out of Babylon, two streams. Uh, one was the ancient mystery religion that maintained uh, the old system, the system of giganticism, uh, the system of magic. Uh, that was practiced, and that includes uh, human sacrifice. Uh, 
and uh, these these were part of the what they call the mystery religion initiations, mm -hmm. and these people, the high priests of that particular system, those people who had perverted the doctrines of Zoroaster, uh, they they were a mixture of Medes and Jews, not just Jews, but Medes and Jews, a Turkish people. These. Uh, these Medes and Jews, and they, th those high priests, they're the ones who like to wear the red cloaks and the purple cloaks and the big sashes and everything, the pointed hats, and uh, uh, they, were, they were expelled by Darius uh, to uh, Pergamum in uh, 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 western Turkey, and then that whole system moved intact as a cult to Rome mm. and it became the, the cult of the Roman emperor the emperor is God cult the Pontifus Maximus cult which is now the Catholic cult so that's one stream and mm. it's an ancient stream and that stream predates uh, the flood okay, uh, okay that we know of from prophet Noah mm. the new stream uh, comes from Babylon there were stragglers, the students of those high magi. They weren't rich enough. They uh, were left behind, these Medes and these Jews. And you can think about them as the poor Sufis <laughs> of, the, of that day mm -hmm. uh, uh, and of that particular uh, religion. Uh, they were the poor ones. They stayed behind. Alexander rescued them. Alexander the Great rescued them and uh, put them back in a position of high social standing, and they became the new priest. Now, mm -hmm. both of these streams, the one that went to Pergamum, the ones that stayed behind, they had uh, imbibed the doctrines of Harut and Marut. They knew these things. They knew about the practice of magic. They knew all about demonology, da-da-da-da-da. But this new cult was somewhat different because they were uh, they were infiltrated uh, and not only infiltrated but part and parcel of the Jewish exile mm. okay into Babylon okay so you you have to think about two Jewish streams here those that imbibed the, the doctrines of Harut and Marut and those that did not those that did not became the the line of the the Zadok, the priest who went back to Jerusalem and then uh, rebuilt the temple. Okay, uh, and this temple is the one that uh, was destroyed by Titus in seventy A.D. But those Babylonian Jews that did not come back to mm. Judea to build the temple, they stayed behind and they perfected this new system of magic. They perfected it, okay? And this is what has come down to us as the Jewish books of magic, and they're all based on the Kabbalah, mm. okay? Now, this stream eventually made its way into the West as well. So you have the ancient stream and you have the neo-Babylonian stream of magic. They're meeting up and they, you know, it's not that they don't have, they don't knock heads because they do. All of the, all of these people, these magical leaders and these crooked kings uh, who follow this system, the, you know, the, the king who wants the, the, the magician to advise him with astrology and all this sort of thing all the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, these kings are always bumping heads and they were always fighting each other and the magi were always fighting each other, trying right. to say, I have the strongest demon, my demon's better than yours, my dad can beat your dad, you see, this, this sort right. of silly, right. yeah. stupid thinking, okay? They think this way. And this is what they do. And all this, all of this came to a head and was, uh, how shall I say, uh, reconstructed 
uh, in the 18th century by the Illuminati under the Jesuits via Adam Weiss help in the Frankfurt School of Jews, the rich bankers, and the Sabbateans who had become Frank Frankist uh, from Eastern Europe and Poland and in those areas. They came together and they formed a new system. They infiltrated in the, the Freemasonic system. And this Freemasonic system then incorporated the ancient mystery religion, the Neo-Babylonian doctrines, and brought them together in Freemasonry. Freemasonry became a bureaucracy. And that bureaucracy was spread across the world as the British Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. And this has um, incorporated these demonic teachings as part of the educational system now all over the world by means of the English language. Hmm. Okay. That's that, you know, why that, the whole that, world... When we talk about archetypes, it's very interesting because Pharaoh, as an archetype, can't be an archetype without the magicians, right? He yes. needs the magicians. Right, he can. And so, he needs a magician. So now these bankers, and we know who they are, these bankers, in order to, be, because they're moving in a certain direction, to create that yes. ideal world that they want, the Pharaonic mm -hmm. model, yes. they have to have the magicians. Yes, and, and so they have to have them. They have to have the magicians, and this is probably, they're still working on it to make it bigger and stronger. And I, yeah. I wonder if it has a lot to do with all the prayers stopped and, and you know, Mecca stopped and Medina stopped and, you know, yeah. that that allows certain things to come out now that would yes. be more problematic. Uh, I mean, yes. it's like unthinkable that there that around the whole world, there's no uh, <laughs> prayers being done. In no, congr country. no congregational prayer. No congregational uh, isn't that prayer? interesting? <laughs> yes. Congregational prayer has effect, okay, even if it's done, performed by people who are not uh, fully informed, okay, mm -hmm. because you, the, the, the principle here is that Allah rewards intention, mm. okay, so if the intent is pure, then the protection granted is equal to that purity of intention. OK, that's why you see uh, uh, certain groups of people that you would otherwise consider kufir being uh, graced by Allah's protection, you see. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, why do they have the protection and we don't? It's because that the intention is different, you see. Mm -hmm. The Muslim intention may be more selfish when they come together in prayer, mm -hmm. and the Christians may be more open and generous and godlike in intention you see yeah. and, and i have and seen there where yeah. i've seen where whether it be jew or christian they yeah. have better intentions than than sometimes even a muslim does right yeah uh like a and good this, example of that yeah. is in rock um in 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 in, in um, I forget which university in New Jersey, but there was like a gathering where there was a Muslim speaker and a Christian speaker and a Jewish speaker, and the Jewish speaker is saying more Islamic things, right? I mean, so the yes. I mean, sorry, the Jewish speaker is saying more Islamic things. So the the Muslim speaker comes on top and he says, "Oh, we have had four women as presidents, and you know we're you know we're kind of like marching forward with being progressive." Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And the Jewish man's like, well, you know, we've met all our goals. You know, yeah, we became a world economic power. Yes. You know, we got Israel as a state. But, you know, we the Jewish people, we've lost God in the process and, uh -huh. and, and yes. we've lost God in the process. And, and, and he talks yes. about how the melting pot has created uh -huh. this phenomenon of the vanishing Jew where every everyone, every, all the Jews have become less religious. Right. Yes. And and so I was like thinking, like, you know, that Jewish guy was a lot more Islamic <laughs> in his speech <laughs> than, yes. the, than the Muslim yes. guy was. Right. Yes. This, and, this, this kind of this humility is key. The humility is key to intention, to the right intention, you see. Mm -hmm. And when you when you have a proud and arrogant stance, this is the stance of Iblis. This is the stance of the legalist this is the stance of those people who use the law 
who will use the Sharia to maintain their dominion over the people in order to maintain their power, okay? And they actually prevent the kingdom of Allah from manifesting both inwardly and outwardly, okay? okay. And uh, uh, that actually may be a good place for us to stop now. Okay. And we, we, can, we, can, we can take this up uh, at our next uh, uh, conversation in uh, two or three days. I need okay. some time to, 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 to recover because I, I say recover. What does that mean? It means that there's a, there's a certain infilling that takes place and then there's a certain outflow. Okay. Mm. And this outflow is an emptying. Okay. Mm. And after the emptying, uh, you, you need time to be refilled. Hmm. And I have found that that's why I'm I'm taking a couple of days uh, as well as that's my fine. other work but, that's fine. Uh, uh, to between these lectures. But may it be uh, a, a wonderful uh, experience for our listeners during this month of Ramadan. And uh, I, I, I wish a blessed and holy month to everyone and all uh, who who attend to uh, what it is that we're sharing here. And especially you, Sheikh, thank you so much for you uh, too, keeping you so me much. on your, your invitation list. And uh, may it please Allah to continue this uh, relationship so that we can uh, continue teaching each other and teaching uh, those given to us as our students. Uh, I mean. Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas.